this one I got at uh, Whiskey Live, one of the early Whiskey Live Torontos, and got John to sign it for me when he was there. Beautiful. So uh, the bottle are, I'll keep no matter what, even when it's empty. Yes. We are live right now. I got to make some adjustments here. Mm -hmm. Come in. Let me find it. We're, gotta, we're still letting the, the uh, circus breathe a little bit. It, yeah, and it should be. Should be breathing. I need to take the wait. lid off. Yeah, I'm going to take the lid it's off. It's been a while since I, I tasted have, that one. What did you guys think of it? I haven't we, we haven't tried it. I yet. haven't even noticed. Yeah, this will be the first time. I didn't even notice it. Well, we opened it and poured it. Right. And then um, I know what has it been three years? You would you you surprised me and we opened the general during a show. Um, late fourteen. Yeah. So three and a half years. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I haven't been back since. At the time, although we hadn't let it open up yet, it was it was for me it was a little too oaky, which I'm not yeah. as big a fan of the oak. Well, like I said, when we were talking with John in the last segment, I have not had a bad compass box yet. Right. I, I would agree I mean, with that. Between John, Glenn, and the entire team there, or Greg and the entire team, uh, and Jill and everybody there, they just, they've just made some great whiskeys over the years. Well, it's nice. I mean, he's grown from 7 to 15, more than doubled. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the, the whole idea that you know, when he started, whiskey wasn't the huge end thing that it is now. I mean, yeah. um, beautiful timing. Um, really, Compass Box is, is, well, it's ahead of the times. Somebody's so. got a grin on his face over there. Uh, That's I so a, funny. Well, <laughs> so I, I, I am a collector. Every whiskey yeah. has, has its time. Mm -hmm. The circus was pretty rare, though. I did have a bottle. I'm like, you know, it's going to take a special event to open the circus. And I had said when... Uh, if we ever get John Glazer on the show, I will pop the circus. Mm -hmm. in, in between those times, though, I have a, a, a f someone that's watching now has a, has me a second bottle of the circus. Right, he's sourced. So opening this one wasn't going to be as much of a of a of, pain uh, to yeah, the heart. Than not, you no know? palpitation. But he just that that fan just commented. He said <laughs> that he opened up my bottle as well <laughs> uh, while we were live with John. So I was like, oh no. Oh. <laughs> So See, yeah, that's, why, that's why I don't collect anything. Good well, man. Every, everything back here, everything on these shelves, with the exception of maybe 10 bottles that I either filled at a distillery or were given to me by a distillery manager. Uh, for instance, I've got a bottle of Angel's Envy that Lincoln Henderson signed. Sure. I can get another bottle of Angel's Envy. Right. Lincoln's passed on. I'm not going to get another signed one. Right. That one I'm not going to open. Sure. If somebody wants to try Angel's Envy. I got Angel's Envy. They can try. We're not going to open that one. Same with uh, some of the Parker Bean bottles that I have signed. But other than that, somebody comes to my house and they're they know what they're doing and they want to try it. Anything on this shelf is fair game. I love that rule. Uh, we well, need to visit. And those are beautiful shelves, by the way, too. <laughs> yeah. Mark. We I, always covet. Uh, yeah, I know when we first had you on, I think you had just had them built or had just bought them. Or, or oh, you, no, my wife found them on Craigslist. You, yeah, you were still setting everything up. But yeah, yeah. they looked very nice back there. Yep. Yeah, and this the camera angle hides the dust. I haven't <laughs> dusted in a while. That would be a lot That's a dust. good angle, yeah. Yeah. That wow. was a deliberate thing on my part. So uh, most people are, are coming back in now. We have poured the circus. That's right here. Mm. Uh, we popped that at the beginning of the show with John Glazer. Uh, I'm a man of my word. I had said when we get John Glazer on the show, we will open the circus. It's been opened. I haven't even nosed it yet, though. It's been we sitting should. here. It was one hour ago that we opened it and we poured it. Wow. And then, Mark, go ahead and let everybody know again what you've poured from Compass Box. Well, I had earlier tried when we were talking with John the uh, a sample of the new hedon hedonism muse that John was talking about, and then um, after that, I've moved on to uh, my 2006 Magic Cask bottling that was an exclusive for the LCBO in Ontario. That uh, was pro I think it was pretty much one of my first Compass Box bottlings, and I met John at uh, Whiskey Live in Toronto, I believe, and got him to sign it for me. Beautiful. So this is one of these collectors' bottles that. Uh, one, even when the whiskey's gone, and I will drink it all at some point, I've managed to get this through twelve years almost. So, um, when I get to, when I finish this, this bottle will go across the the way into my uh, cabinet of oddities that doesn't get touched. Cool. And I've also uh, right near the end of the show, Scott opened up his uh, Compass Box double single, which oh, is yeah. 
delicious. It's a single grain and a single malt, just those two blended together. And my goodness, is that rich and mm -hmm. viscous and vanilla, yeah, and creamy, and oily, and, and tropical. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can tell that he doesn't chill filter with that one. It's delicious. People who've never tried single grain whiskeys need to try something from Compass Box. Yes. Because if you try something, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a name here, something like a Hague Club, that's good for cocktails. That's what it was meant for, but it won't give you the the variations and the quality that a really good single grain does. Right. And what John has done with uh, hedonism with blended grain and with the double single and with grain whiskeys is he basically uh, kept that category going for a while. But I, I love single grains on a hot summer day. I'll drink a single grain, maybe one ice cube over a single malt or a bourbon anytime. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the flavors, uh, that double single, Scott poured me a little bit and I said, man, can I have a little more of that? It's just the, the flavor explosions that were coming out. Uh, there. There's still one or two on the shelves here in town. I've seen really? it's a little high. It's like 160 though. Okay. It's a little high. Wow. Um, the service is just a travel rush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, this is live. Stop. I've got to go get this. No, no, no one watching is in Wichita. Why did my email just pop up? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It like, was like boom. To yeah. The wow. Are we still here? You got hacked. I, um, I did notice though we had gone live. We just had, uh, we just connected with John and I always hardline in my computer to my router when I do a live stream. Sure. Which I did, but I never switched off the Wi-Fi. Oh, so we were still Wi-Fi in. Oh, but I, I was like, oh my god, I hope everything goes smooth because I didn't want to switch it at that sure. time and and risk losing a connection. I'm still sitting here though. I've never, I never, I've, and I forgot to go back and switch to to the hard line. So we're still Wi-Fi. Hopefully everything You're fine. Everything looks great. Goes great. So the, the shark good at this end, guys. Thank you. The, the circus <laughs> that's, uh, was that's saying something. Yeah. Came off a little light on the nose. <laughs> Not a, a real good, or not a not a powerful nose on it. It was. A, I do get a little bit of some some raisins or some plums. Yeah, I get a raisin and a and a spice. Uh, the first sip, like was, a little ginger. The first sip was delicious. Mm. Yeah, ginger. Yeah, good one. Mm. Um, I do wow. a quick shout. Yeah, Woo. great palate on on the circus. Uh, Don Sutcliffe is with us today as well. Hey, Don A. And I meant to uh, shout out to him and some of the other blends when we had John on, but there was really, we could still be talking to John. I think you could, sure. you could carry on a conversation with John yeah. for, for quite a while. And we had a list of questions ourselves uh, to ask John. Uh, Don Sutcliffe with the exceptional series though. And he's been a big supporter of us, uh, you know, from when we first met him at a tasting in Wichita, right. a couple of uh, last fall of 16, I believe it was. Uh, and Don's, the exceptional blends are real done real well also in along with Compass Box. Mm -hmm. But Douglas Lang also, I think, is doing some yeah. exceptional blending. Yeah. The, the way they do their regional blending is really interesting. I pulled out my cheat sheet or the this is this is the sheet from Compass Box on the circus that you can get from the website. Well, the, and this was before they could release all of the ages. We might be able to go there now and get all of the ages that's in the circus. What do you got? 57.2% uh, is from a refill sherry, but uh, blended scotch whiskey, parcel number one. 26% uh, is from a refill sherry, but blended grain whiskey. 15% uh, is from a first fill sherry butt from the Ben Rennes distillery. Oh, nice. And 1.4% refill sherry butt blended scotch whiskey parcel two. So nice. Mm. And, and um, good. I knew that John uh, could not couldn't be proactive in releasing um, information on, on his whiskeys. And, and he talked about his new release of hedonism the muse that's coming up. And I didn't know if he would want to release more information on that yet or not. I don't think the actual press releases until Thursday. Right. But we did ask right. him, I said, well, what, what can you tell us about the ages and the distilleries in, in hedonism, the muse? And he went into all of it, just disclosed it all. Do you think any well, legal this way, guys, I had been told that I couldn't even talk about it till Thursday. Ooh. <laughs> 
So they sent me well, a sample a couple of weeks ago and said, yeah, we're not going to release any other information. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to talk about it because yes, I can say it's coming. It's the head and his muse, but I don't know any more than that because they didn't include any information on it. And then John comes on and basically spills all the beans with you guys. Kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's too late for this week's show anyway, so I'm going to wait till um, next week's show, and I'll do my tasting notes for it next week. <laughs> with with your knowledge of the industry, do you see any changes coming with uh, with the rules being lessened or, or lightened a little bit, so more disclosure can happen, or is it going to be status quo? It's going to be fun to see what Brexit does because. Right now, John talked about the Scotch Whiskey Association trying to get the law changed. Well, it's a little more complicated than that right now because it's not just the Great Britain law, it's European Union law that's mm. causing the issues. And if you want to change a European Union law, you have to get all 28 member countries in the EU to agree to it. Wow. Which means it ain't going to happen. Right. So a year from now, when Great Britain is no longer part of the EU... Theoretically, it might be easier to change that law hmm. if you can get the if you can get the industry on board. The problem is you're still going to have all the uh, trade rules. It depends on what the uh, status of <coughs> excuse me. It depends on how they work out the trade agreements between Great Britain and the EU, and EU and Great Britain's role in the common market in the co single market going forward, as to whether they can change those rules easily. Hmm. So. That's going to be the complex thing, and it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, that is interesting. Wow, I never even thought about the complexities of the EU involved. Yeah, that's where the main rule is, because they could change it. That that whole rule about uh, only listing the youngest age on the bottle is not just enshrined in the Scotch Whiskey Act of 2009 in Great Britain. It's enshrined in European Union law, and it applies to all spirits. If it's hmm. a blend... You can't, same thing with brandies, same thing with cognacs. Um, if you blend it and it's got more than one age, the youngest age is what you have to declare. Right. So it's not just a scotch whiskey issue. If you change it in Europe, you're changing it for all spirits categories. Gotcha. And then every, every nation has its own interests at heart. And that's when all hell breaks loose. <laughs> now, before we went live, I know you were catching us up on where you're going to be. You're going to be moving a lot. Um, for the fans who might be in some of these locales, would you mind putting that out again? Sure. I will be in Waco, Texas this coming weekend on Saturday and Friday and Saturday, and possibly a little bit of Sunday for the, uh, or definitely on Saturday for the uh, Balconis Rye Fest. They're getting ready to release their first rye whiskey at uh, Balconis in Waco and invited me to come down. So I'll be down there for that on Saturday, the 9th, or the 10th, rather. And then the following week, I will be in Dublin for something I can't really talk about yet. Mm. But uh, I will be, I'm pretty sure if anybody in Dublin is watching, I'll probably be at the Long Haul Pub on Friday at some point during the day. Okay. Only because I love the Long Haul. Cool. And then the weekend after that, I will be at the Wonderful World of Whiskey Show in Cornwall, Ontario at the NAV Center up in Canada. They invited me to come up and do the show from up there this year. It's their second year, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I always love going up to uh, Canada, especially uh, when I, for whiskey reasons, because I've got a lot of listeners up there, and I've got a lot of friends, and I love going up there to visit. Oh, yeah. Love Canada. And then after that, I get a weekend at home. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you are, you are, uh, you're, well, you're world traveling. Well, fortunately, I've gotten the podcast down to where I can get everything into a briefcase and one Pelican case that I need to take on the road. Wow. So I'm still checking a bag or two at the airport, but uh, it's to the point where I, I can still take everything on the road that I need and get it into one or two suitcases, and it's not bad. Now, a question um, we've talked about maybe we're going to do the bourbon trail and some different things coming up soon. We've got to work out our day job and everything else with it, but... right. Is there a, a a whiskey trade show or what would be a good thing for maybe us, you know, maybe even in 2019 to go to? What would you suggest? Well, if you can schedule it for June, what I would do is try to hit the bourbon affair in June. Okay. Because the Kentucky Distillers Association puts that on and it coincides with Whiskey Live Louisville, mm. which is, I think, in its second year this year. 
and they run that on Saturday night of the of the uh, Bourbon Affair week. And the fun part about that is that the distilleries open up for admittedly some high priced but unique experiences. Uh, one of the things Wild Turkey has done in the past is you get to go skeet shooting with Jimmy and Eddie Russell. Wow. Uh, if you're into fishing, uh, Jim Beam does a, has done a thing in the past where Fred No takes you to his and Booker's secret fishing hole to go fishing and drink bourbon. Hmm. Experiences like that that you don't normally get at a whiskey festival. And then you combine that with Whiskey Live Louisville and you get all the, the uh, fun of the trade show that goes along with it. Hmm. Excellent. So that might be kind of fun for you guys. Yeah, um, look that up. And they limit the ticket sales for it so that it's not like the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, which is wonderful. I love going to it every year. But it draws 50,000 people to the Bardstown area. Right. And you don't get the time at the distilleries that you'd really like to have because they're running everybody in and out on tours and it's nonstop touring and it's it's basically Disneyland. Sure. At that time, you're, you're spending a lot of time in line. Right. And I bet you hotels are a real pain too. Yeah, because Bardstown is not known for its hotels. When the Hampton Inn is, is the biggest place in town, you've got an issue. <laughs> and I say that with all love for Bardstown, but when I go to the Bourbon Festival, I stay up on I-65 about 15, 20 miles away mm. just because the Hampton Inn is $200 a night during Bourbon Festival week in Bardstown. Wow. And I'm not paying that. Sure. I don't need the Hilton points that badly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we have to do a couple shout outs. One to Tom R. real quick. Right. Um, he gave a, a, a super chat to us. Thank you, Tom R. Appreciate ding, ding, ding. it. Ding, Virtual cowbell. Now, we did, uh, we addressed it. I, uh, Tom, I think we influenced Tom into trying we did. Compass Box last, think. last year. We basically Good. forced him. And and <laughs> and Tom became a big Compass Box fanboy. Rightfully so. He, he, and I think I recommended to him Oak Cross and Spice Tree, if I remember, to start with. Right. I said, go from there. I think he's tried the whole, the core range and about every special edition he's, he can get his hands on since and, and loves them. So we did, we, I, I reached out to Tom and I said, hey, what if you could ask a question to John Glazer, what would it be? So we addressed that. Tom gave us a super chat. And, thank and you, he, yeah, thank you, Tom. And he says that uh, he could listen to John talk for hours. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And we had we had a lot more questions yeah. uh, for John. We had we knew we had he he told us twenty to thirty minutes. We actually got about forty five right. out of him. Yeah. Scott's prep to me was shut up and let John talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even then, early on, I was like, Pete Monster, thank you for the Pete Monster. And he's like, I'm I I was getting virtually kicked under the table. Shut up. <laughs> Good thing Scott didn't have a taser under the table. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've right to the throat. Right to the throat he would have gone with the taser. Uh, <laughs> G2 the M is asking, how is the circus? And I Delicious. find it, I, it meets and exceeds expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, this is this is a good bottle. Great bottle. The The thing is, though, it's not really, uh, it's not over, the sherry isn't overpowering with it. See, I it's, figured you would be in love with the sherry I'm getting. Well, it is. It's good okay. sherry, but there's also there's brown sugars. Yes. There's the sherry. There's there's also vanillas mm -hmm. and citruses with it. Um, you know, you look at a Glendronic, some of the sherry bombs right. that they're doing. Right. I mean, it's it it's a lot heavier sherry. Right. This is a very nice, pleasant sherry. It's there. It's present. But there's other stuff with it as well. Uh, right. It's very well. I remember done. thinking. I'm going to have to sit down with you when we're not live mm -hmm. and just slow down the process. Cause you're mm -hmm. right there. I feel like there's, there's more subtleties going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a result of the blend, mm -hmm. I mean, bring in all these different whiskeys, these single malts together and single grains. There's some grain whiskey in there. I'm sure. Right. Too. I don't remember. I went over the list, I guess. Was there a grain whiskey? There was a grain cause there was a blended. Um, one of them was a blended. Yep. Uh, cask number two and it was a blended grain scotch whiskey so there's some grain in there as well but uh super chat just came in from jan paul vanderhoven uh some peat money he says oh thank you thank you jan paul no jean, mark jean paul jean i think jean mark what anything that's uh, really blown up i mean taste wise what have you tried recently that surprised you even out, obviously outside compass box I'm going to tell you about one I just tried this week. 
Glendalough Distillery over in Ireland mm. released a about three weeks ago a 13 year old Irish single malt. They didn't distill it; they sourced it. Their stuff is still only a couple three years old, but they finished this thing in Mizunara oak casks from Japan. Really. They got their hands on some from one of the few independent coopers over there who could get it because Suntory pretty much controls the uh, the supply of official Mizunara oak. And they got their hands on some, and I'll have my tasting notes for it on this week's show along with an interview with uh, Donna Logalacor of Glendalock. And I tasted it, and wow, it is, it is special. I mean... I think the 13-year-old single malt came from Bushmills. I can't be sure about that. It could have come from Cooley. But what they did with it with the Mizanara Oak really sort of changed things. It really opened up, added some fruitiness to it, really opened up a lot of nice things with it. Mm. Speaking of Irish whiskey. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. It, well, uh, the first, I think the first time you tuned in, you yeah. said, is that uh, the, the yeah. Barry Crockett legacy behind yeah. you? And I said, yes, it is. That's the missus. Uh, yeah, yeah. And well, uh, Mark, Mark is a big fan of Irish whiskey to those that uh, that are tuning in. Uh, by the way, if you just tuned in or weren't here at the first, Mark Gillespie, uh, known of Whiskey Cast Podcast. Right, world famous. It, world famous is Please. joining us. <laughs> and, and, and like I like I say, every bottle has an occasion. I, I buy bottles, some I keep, and I wait for a special occasion. Today, having John Glazer on, we opened up the circus. That was one of those special second, occasion guys. bottles. When uh, when Mark Gillespie first joined us, right, I had had this one sitting in the background. It yeah. needed a special occasion. It was it. And and Mark talked us in, talked me into open it. Right. Well, actually, he didn't even take any talking. He said, "What is that?" The late Barry Crockett. I said, "Yep, yeah, boom, it's open." All right, a little bit of pee came out. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, I, I bet you he went to go get his bottle That's right. what he's, he getting his he's, bottle. he's right. probably his wife is right. trying to run she's like no you can't have it from the house That's right with it. you can't have it that's my favorite <laughs> quit quit drinking that no she's not here oh there uh -oh, we go what's he's bringing out she will be special. here tonight I'll bet you this is like he's probably got like samples of Barry Crockett right from the distillery mm -hmm. right? no 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 not almost <laughs> what I have here, and I have to admit, I have not opened any of these yet, and I'm not going to mm. yet. <laughs> I have the six bottles from the six different trees from the new Middleton Der Guelach. Oh, really? Really? Forest bottling that was just announced a few weeks ago. Wow. Um, they, they sent these to me and brought them over. Actually, an Irish distiller's PR person brought them over to New York on vacation with her so that I, she could get them to me. Mm. And the only reason I haven't opened them yet is because there's six different trees that they used each individual tree to make a cask from, for mature, for finishing these. And each cask has its own different market that it's going to, and has its own different ABV strength. Wow. So I haven't opened them yet because I'm waiting for them to send me the key that tells me which casks are going to which markets <laughs> and which ABV is which. Because all wow. I've got is this range of like three to between 54 and 57 percent. So I don't want to open them until I know which one is which hmm. and where it's going so that I can do the proper tasting notes. So I'm hoping to have this done in time for St. Patrick's Day, if not this coming week. But sure. these are the ones I'm working on right now or getting ready to work on as soon as I can. And Beautiful. I will tell you, uh, you we were during the break, we were talking about me fighting the flu. Sure. These came in while I was sick, and you referred to my wife being the Barry Crockett legacy fan. Right. While I was up in bed upstairs, and the box came in, she opened it up without telling me <laughs> and hid these for the better part of two or three weeks. Oh, no. no. <laughs> because she was going, if these are coming in and I got to put up with your sick butt for about two weeks with the flu... I get to try these first. Oh, wow. <laughs> that did not happen. I found out about it, rescued the bottles with a uh, SWAT-style commando attempt. <laughs> you parachuted and, in. Yeah. And I have been holding on to them waiting. Legitimately, yeah, I've been waiting for the information so that I can do it properly because I can sure. taste all of these. But I want to know before I post tasting notes, which one, because each of the casks is going, for instance, one cask is destined for the U.S., one stays in Ireland, one goes to Europe, things like that. 
So I want to know which casks are going to which markets before I actually do the tasting notes, but they all have their own individual samples of uh, this one is I'm looking at, I believe is, uh, this is tree number, yeah, this is tree number one. And I'll hold it up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but each of these is, has an oak ring on it that labels the uh, the tree that it's going from. Because when they felled the trees in an Irish oak, Irish forest, in the Bluebell Forest, they kept the wood from that tree separate and made a, made a cask from each tree. Wow. Now and we're talking six different regions then. So we're talking like... No, six different from the same forest. Six different trees from the same forest. Right, but they're going to six different regions. So U.S., Ireland, uh, what? Uh, I think friend, there may be two for the U.S. There may be one for Ireland. I don't know, but I want to get the breakdown before I post the tasting notes. You bet. Wow. But that's why I'm looking forward to this because when they did the original uh, Grinnell's Wood Dagwaylock, uh, I think about three, two to three years ago, they had 10 different trees. Goodness. And 10 different casks. So I only got to try, I think, one or two of them. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, that's really neat. So that's, that's like uh, inside on the Irish whiskey ball. front. I'm looking forward to that before St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Wow. What do you got? What are you looking at? I was looking at, see, uh, you help yourself to more circus if you want it. Oh, wow. Well, I was um, a little if nervous. You want, if you want double single, if you want, um, I was thinking, I know you're a peat head. Yeah. We have not opened. I've had a sample of the Lost Blend. Okay. Do you want to try it's peated? I will say yes. Do you yes. want to try the Lost Blend? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Say, that's a good say, one. Yeah, you say peated. That's, that's like dirty talk. Well, and for those tuning in, hopefully you know we had John Glazer on first. Sure. We stopped from Compass Box. Thanks to Mark for helping out with that. Uh, we had him via I didn't phone. do that much. Oh, good. <laughs> well, we <laughs> no, were, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I think you did a lot. I, think I was so. just yes. on the email chain. Well, I love that. That is good. I know Scott, you know, we've got great fans, and Scott Slather, uh, Slattery had reached out uh, to you, and uh, – and and that kind of started the the chain. So thank I think he you. asked if I had contacts with John that could help get it. So I, I sent the email to John, and I think I think that's the way it worked out. This I was a couple so. of months ago. Love it, love it. And uh, so thank you to to you oh. to John and to Scott for for causing that whole chain to happen. My pleasure. Was, John's one of my favorite guys in the whiskey business. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the whiskey world is just a fun, fabulous place to be in. Oh, this beats real work all the, uh, you know what? Oh, yeah, nice glass, can, Scott. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. The one yes, I, I can. pulled out of my drawer, whiskey glass. That is right a there. great glass. <laughs> Beautiful logo. No, just I'm going to let you. Work. Okay. No. I've and had I use those of... challenge coins for uh, covers on my glasses when I'm uh, sit, letting them sit. Beautiful. Uh, we have a whiskey a, hat. Our new cask threes are out, and Mark will send one to you. Yep, we'll get you caught we up. The, Thank we, you. We got kind of a new uh, design on the back. I Android. like that. Yeah, new Android head. That that's like a that's that's a smart dummy. That's a future dummy. And I've got that's the droid we're looking for. That, <laughs> there yes, you go. I that love that. That is the droid. We're that looking is perfect. For. <laughs> Hey, you guys want to talk about this uh, Drams for Fams things that we talked about on the show? I um, yes. was cast about a few days ago that you guys are going to take part in. Yeah, you, you thank know, you for that, that shout that out. Was, yeah, that Let's talk about this awesome. because we want to get some people in. This is a good cause. Um, it is a very good cause. Go ahead. I'll let you, you guys talk about it. Well, the Edmonton uh, Scotch Club had reached out to us, and, and they've done for a few years a fundraiser right. for um, well, dr hashtag Drams for Fams. It's for local food banks. Mm-hmm. They had grown enough just doing uh, their tasting club and what they could do in Edmonton. They decided or they said, Let, let's see if we reach out to some people elsewhere, if we can get this bigger and get more money in. Yeah. They, they have invited us. There's a few other people they've invited, and we'll probably reach out to some of our other uh, whiskey tubers, sure. as we call them as well, get some involved. But you can donate. Uh, it doesn't have to be to the Edmonton food bank, right? They it, even say you can do it locally uh, yeah, to, to your, your food, bank. your own local food banks. You make donations, you know, capture a screenshot, you know, tweet it out, Facebook it, Instagram mm -hmm. it, hashtag it with drams for fams. And they, they just want to see what they can do this year as far as expanding. They felt like they had reached their cap locally with what they were doing. Right. And we and loved it to get whiskey clubs, around North America to take, and anywhere else, frankly, to take part in this and host a tasting. Everybody throws an extra 10 bucks in, 
goes to the local food bank and because these food banks, we don't really think about it, but hunger is a big problem. Mm -hmm. And a food bank can take your $10 and leverage it to provide meals for 30 or 40 people. That's right. And it really is an important cause. Yes. And we can, we can do some good with this. And yep. uh, I, I had Travis from the Edmonton Scotch Club on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he told me you guys were doing it. And I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We're going to well, do a live show. Go ahead. Maybe it, it, it happens in the month of May. And right. what we may do is maybe we do every weekend or as many live streams as we can do on the weekends. Maybe it'll be for the month of May or maybe it's just one. We haven't, we haven't talked yeah, about it enough to decide. About, yeah. We like the focus. Yeah. One for sure. Right. But all the super chats that come in uh, during that live that stream show. will go to the, uh, our local, our food, local bank. food bank. Right. Yeah. We'll make the donation yep. there. Yep. You've got the Lord's Diner that does a lot but, of great work here and, locally. And like I said, if we can get some of our other fellow uh, whiskey tubers involved as well, maybe we can right. get the, the hashtag it. Drams for Fans yep. out there. And, and whiskey fans are such great supporters. And I think yeah. when they w reach out to their own local food bank, uh, wonderful. And you're right. You know, uh, I know even our local uh, food bank, they do, uh, they even have food trucks that go into different neighborhoods and, and use that kind of trendy food truck so they can reach the people and they don't have to just travel downtown, which is what, yeah. what our group does. So it's really neat. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it because we think everything is well and good out in the world, but there are a lot of people who go hungry. Sure. And yeah. that leads to a lot of other problems in society. So if we can, if we can do a little bit, every little bit helps. Yep. I agree. I agree. If yeah, you guys will let me know when you decide to do your super chat, then we'll promote it on Whiskey Cast as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. We'll lock that date in. By the way, this is <laughs> this is delicious, Pete. Yeah. The lost blend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I pulled out my cheat sheet on it, but I didn't do the uh the back page that has the distilleries involved. I could pull it up and look, but I've oh. just got the, the front sheet. Oh, just assume it starts with Klein Leash and go from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only thing John doesn't put Klein Leash in is hedonism. Yeah. Mm. Well, and he addressed wow. that because I know the new release is head, Hedonism the Muse, but he's done, and a, a super chat just came in from Whiskey Throttle. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, my local boy, Travis, is awesome. Uh, he's talking about the Edmonton Scotch Club here yep. and, and uh, those guys. So uh, he wants Bart How's to it drink. Going, eh? He wants Bart to drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hoser. Uh, he wants Bart to drink from the bottle. I won't allow Bart to drink from my bottle. He's worried about Throttle. what back splash I might have. Back there, yeah. wash. Backwash. <laughs> the alcohol content is high enough it would kill any backwash. There you go. I like the way you talk. It would just uh, alter the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> to the better, my son. <laughs> to the better. Um, it's a blend. <laughs> I saw the super chat come in. What was I saying, though? We were talking about. You were saying poor more lost blend. <laughs> you can help yourself. I know. <laughs> I know where one of these is in town on clearance. Uh you send me. I'm probably headed there after we leave. <laughs> That's good. You got a designated driver though, right, Bart? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Maybe even Uber. Oh, but okay. does Uber uh, have lights and a siren to get you there quickly? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Tom R is wanting more information on the food bank program as we, in April, uh, that's going to happen in May. In April, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on yep. that and get out, get yep. out more yeah, information. We, we will use our channel to really put out information and when that show is going to occur. Right. Right. Yeah. So there'll be more information. Cause we have to get some more info as well. That. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'll tie in with Mark as well. That'll be wonderful. So what and, have you guys tasted that's new that you like? Uh, yeah. The compass box stuff. Well, the, the circus that Scott just opened, and yeah. quite honestly... But that's not a new one, though. That's been out yeah. for a while. That's, I know. It's, just, it's new to us. He's but, coveted this one, so it's yeah. been locked away in Lucite for a long, long yeah. time. From Compass Box, the new one. Well, no, nothing. I mean, just in general, he's wanting to know what we've had. This. I'm trying to think what we've done lately that's new. Well, then... Out. The no name was probably the newest. I know that's Compass Box, but that was the one that grew and and opened up as we were tasting it. 
Um, I'm just rack, I'm racking my brain here while I'm trying to think. The the Lagavulin 12 year 2017 edition. Of course, that's a few months old now, though. That one was delicious. Have you tried uh, the eight year old? Yes. Yes. Yep. Phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, those are all in. Well, we got several Lagavulins, Lafroigs, Ardbegs are in that Pete, that 16 bottle Pete shootout that we're doing right now. Oh, I'm in Nirvana. So. Um, you uh, know what I love from your show recently was your interview with, uh, and I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Working from MGP. Yeah, Gordon Working from MGP. He's one of the head distillers out there. Phenomenal interview. You know, I knew like uh, the rye that Dickel has is sourced from MGP. Uh, we could go on and on with stuff, but I, you know, every time I'm sitting there going, wow, I'm loving this. And sure enough, it's from MGP. So, uh, um, I'm going to reach out to, to Mr. Working. We'll see if we can get him to come on the show. I really love what they're doing. The uh, thing is with MGP is that a lot of people like to complain about MGP juice. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the stuff coming out of the distillery is first rate. It's always been good. Yes. It's what happens when people buy their casks of it or buy a stock of it and then screw around with it. Sure. That, that changes it. And it doesn't always wind up being as good as you could expect, but th they've always made good. I mean, they've been making good juice since the Seagram's days. Right. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. They don't screw around. They make good stuff. And yes, some of it got, winds up going into things that they aren't as transparent as they should be, but that's not MGP's fault. That's exactly. not LDI's fault. They're predecessors. Right. That's the fault of the companies that they're working with. Exactly. And those companies have gotten snapped on for it. Well, you know what we did what I didn't realize, no. um, MGP started out in Kansas. Right. Which in is Topeka. where we're, where oh, we're at. still in Atchison, Kansas. Yeah. yeah. They, they make vodka out there. Yep. I, yep. Yeah, I, I I did not know that until Bart told me, and I think it might have been even after your live stream. It was, stream it was after after your live stream. Great yeah. interview. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, MGP makes good stuff. It's just, I mean, because if they didn't, then the big boys wouldn't be buying it for their juice. Right. Because it's not just the Dickel rye, it's also the Bullet rye. Is that same 95.5 blend that MGP creates, the only difference is that the Dickel rye goes through the uh, Lincoln County charcoal filtering. Right. Yep. While the Bullet rye doesn't. Love it. So yep. if you want to see what uh, the charcoal filtering does to a whiskey, get a bottle of Dickel rye and get a bottle of Bullet rye and taste them head to head. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same juice. Yeah, that 95.5. Yeah, that was um, I, that interview, uh, Mr. Working, the way he explained everything. I mean, it was just, um, you know, that wider world of whiskey. And, uh, you know, we've talked about MGP a, a couple times out of Indiana. So, love it. Uh, Tom, Tom Hart brought have up a show that I would – go ahead. I was going to say, Tom R. just brought up a trivia question to what we were just talking about. <laughs> he says, who's the founding father of MGP? I, I don't know. I don't know. Founding don't know. father. Mark, that. What's, what's he got? What's he got? Well, he, he literally just asked it. And I think every, every, he better have the answer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he does. Yeah, he better not be asking me. <laughs> Al Young. Al Young. Huh? Who's what? Al Young? Is Not Al what? Young from Four Roses. No, that's what that's what, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Oh bullshit! Ah, <laughs> because Al Young's been at Four. Ro well, no, wait a second. No, wait a second. Okay, he might have a point here. Here's the <laughs> thing: Al Young's been around Four Roses for fifty years. Four Roses was owned by Seagram's for years, which also owned the distillery in Lawrenceburg. Okay. So, I, yeah, in theory, there might have been some connection there. I know Rutledge worked there for a while before he went to Four Roses. So yeah, there might be some connection there, but I I don't I'd want to talk to Al and get the uh, get the truth on that one. He says Tom R is saying yes, that is what he said. Wow, <laughs> did Al say that? Is he is he saying Al said that? I think that's what he's saying. Al, he says because Al I know Al isn't that old, and that distillery was around a long time before, because that thing's been in the Seagrams for family for well over seventy years since hmm. Prohibition ended. Wow. I don't, I don't know, so I can't say. Sounds like a whole extra whiskey cash show. 
Great. Another thing I got to investigate. Yeah, we're staying out of this. <laughs> we'll follow up if somebody steals some more barrels, though. I love that. When you get into those news deals, when there's some forklift operator that's stolen four <laughs> barrels or something, I love that. Hey, you want to hear something stupid? Give it to us. Okay. Wednesday night, and I'm going to rail, I rail about this on this week's show. Okay. Wednesday night, Whiskey Live New York. John Rockford from McLaren Vale Distillery in Australia was making his first New York first U.S. appearance at a whiskey show, hmm. and he created these Bloodstone single cask bottlings that he's done in conjunction with a bunch of the South Australian wineries, where he's taken their casks and made a single malt whiskey matured in a single cask from a single winery. And he had several of these with him that he brought to New York, especially to Port Whiskey Live, New York, and then a couple of nights later in Washington. Well, he's got him. He's got a couple of them on the table that he brought with brought down. He brought several of them for that for that show exclusively Wednesday night. And some while he's talking to somebody at his stand, some jackass comes up, swipes the bottle off the table, in the box, and slides it into his bag and walks off and. The only reason, and John just noticed that a bottle was missing a few minutes later. Mm. And some jackass walked out of there with a bottle of rare Australian whiskey. Uh. And that's the kind of thing that gives whiskey shows and the whiskey fabric, whiskey fabric a bad name. Sure. Sounds like they need to hire some security. Yeah, they bring. Well, they did have security, but the thing is, the security is no. watching the front door. No, they need the dummies at the yeah. table. I was, yeah, a little hidden. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, he he just he was distracted by talking to somebody, and the guy just came up and grabbed it and took off. Scott does yeah. not get distracted. Now, who was I remember though? A few years ago, I think it was was it one of the Lafroy guys that his boot got stolen. Simon, somebody stole Simon Brookings' wellings. At wellies a couple about a year and a half ago. Yeah, off right. the table. And those wellies are what he keeps the special bottles in during the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, but, yeah. There's but always a pair of them, but still, I mean, sure. for for everybody that's out there, if you're going to a whiskey show and you see some jackass doing something like this, tell somebody because it only makes it worse for the rest of us. Yeah, I say go further, latch on to them. Yeah, you and little habeas crap. I I didn't include this in this week's show, but I think I may have actually been in a parking garage elevator in New Jersey with said jackass. Really? What, what happened? Because I'm standing next to him going up to get my car after taking the train down out of, out of New York, and I look down and I see a McLaren Vale Bloodstone box in his bag. Really? And I recognized the box immediately, and I didn't say anything to him. Hmm. But I wish I had. I kind of wish I had, but I didn't say anything at the time. But... I hope the guy, whoever did it is not one of my listeners mm. because I would expect better from our listeners. And I'm hoping it was just some random jackass <laughs> because if it was somebody who actually knows what they're doing and actually understands whiskey, they should be, well, either way, they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, sure. Because all they do is give whiskey, the whiskey fabric, a bad name. And it's wonder, stuff like that that causes brands to pull out of whiskey shows. Yes. I wanted to work in well, they they listened to Whiskey in the Six or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. well <laughs> just to I was pick say, on what it what it what what that what that does is then No, distil- that's terrible. That's terrible. It is, but distilleries or those guys that do, you know, they take the special releases or kind of the secret special stuff and they keep it it, it prevents or people quit, will quit doing that. Sure. So yeah. I mean then that's that's done. They'll be like, yeah, you, the only thing that's going to be here is what you can get in any liquor sure, store. Sure, sure, sure. Right. And, and as I point out on this week's show, that's going to stuff like that. If it ha- keeps happening, it's going to lead to a ban- whiskey shows, putting a ban on carrying bags and briefcases in. Sure. And yeah. if you've seen me at a show, you know, I carry this big ass messenger bag full of camera and audio gear. Right. If they tell me I have to check that, I can only cover a show with what I can carry in my hands. You, it's you going to affect the way special, we cover the way I cover whiskey shows. They would see you and say, "Mark gets a special pass." No, they wouldn't. Actually, I've had trouble at shows. Really? 
a couple of several years ago at Whiskey Fest in New York, I had uh, a run in with security because they said, we need to see inside your bag. And I said, uh, no, you don't. Hmm. Because, and they said, well, you have to leave then. I'm going, no, I have permission to carry this bag on the floor from the organizers of the festival. And they're going, no, you don't. And I'm going, yes, I do. <laughs> and they're saying, I'll bet you a hundred bucks you don't. <laughs> wow. like, oh, really? Let's go find Amy. <laughs> there this was Whiskey Fest at Whiskey Advocates. We went and found Amy Westlake, John Hansel's wife. And she goes, yeah, he has permission to carry that bag. Hmm. And so I get called a few choice names under my breath, under their breath by the security guards. And I never did ask for the hundred bucks because <laughs> I figured they'd be waiting for me in the elevator on the way down to the hotel at the end of the night. Mm. Mm. Uh, a question came in. Do you plan on being at the uh, whiskey fest in Chicago this year or Benny's world of mm. whiskey the night before? I will not because that's the same night that I'll be in Cornwall, Ontario. Oh, wow. For the uh, wonderful World of Whiskey show. I wish I could. I'd love to get out there for it. I just, um, I have not had Whiskey Fest Chicago on my calendar for a while because I usually do Whiskey Fest in New York. Uh, I just, I never make it out to Chicago just because of that time of the year. And this year, the folks in Cornwall asked if I'd come up for that one. And I said, sure. Hmm. Well, you got uh, your, I can tell you, your calendar and your head is good because you didn't even have to look at the date or anything. Sure. I said, are you going to be at Whiskey Fest in Chicago? Nope. Nope. That's when this other one's going yeah. on. Oh. See, Scott's used to me. I'd be like, I have no idea. i got to look at the calendar. <laughs> well, I sort of I, I, I sort of keep these things in my mind. For instance, I know that, for instance, in the past years, I've gone to Whiskey Live Paris in September. I know I'm not going this year because the other night I was asked to be a presenter at the Bourbon and Beyond Festival that same weekend in Louisville. So I'm going to go do that one instead. So I know they're the same weekend because Whiskey Life Paris is traditionally the same week, the weekend after the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, because I've usually gone from Louisville straight over to Paris. Mm. And this year I'm not going to do that. I'm going to probably wind up staying in Kentucky for a few days and just the Bourbon Festival and then Bourbon and Beyond. Beautiful. Hey, let's uh just get back to Compass Box just sure. a little bit. Sure. We touched on it briefly with John. I can remember uh, the Whiskey Advocate had a, a review of Oak Cross. It, you know, at the back of the Whiskey Advocate, they, they'll have 50 to 60 different whiskeys each quarter that they've reviewed, and they score them. They had the Oak Cross in there, and I think they gave it a 92 or a 93 possibly. And I saw it was a blended whiskey. Wow. And I thought, and I'd seen it at our this store. This early on. Early, in our, this was my first compass yeah. box. Sure. The Oak Cross Whiskey Advocate gave it a 92. I had seen it at our liquor store, Auburn Spirits, $50. And I thought, wow, for a 92 for a blended whiskey, $50, I'll pick it up and try it. Hmm. Yeah. It blow, well, I mean, and so, I mean, that, that started my compass box really our compass box because then also the whiskey advocate had, re had reviewed peat monster right. we picked it up and now here's where we are with compass box but mark do you kind of remember your introduction to compass box and what you thought yeah it was 2005 2006 it was the early on compass boxes and tasting them and meeting john glazer at the whiskey live toronto and picking up this bottle of uh, magic cask uh, that was very early on when I met John, pretty much just a couple of, within the year or so after I started doing the show, and just a few years after after John started the company, I I discovered the, the whiskeys at that point, and the original Spice Tree controversy with the Scotch Whiskey Association, and going through all that stuff um, was just, so I've, I've been around John Glazer and Compass Box for something like 12, 13 years now. Mm. Did you think now I can, of course we were early on um, yeah. and not that we were snobs at the time, but you know, you no, thought we you, were more rookies, rookies, you knew single yeah. malts, you knew blends that to us at the time was Johnny Walker's. Sure. Well, that's um, early rookie. Yeah. Right. And, and, but compass box just really, and John Glazer, what he was doing, 
just blew John, Johnny Walker oh, yeah. out of the water. But when we started comparing blends, we were like, what is going on here with Compass Box? It was so flavorful. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between when you can blend in small batches as opposed to trying to blend that the big, massive mm -hmm. six, ten, 10 million cases a year blend. Sure. You're at that point, you're basically it's a, it's a commodity whiskey at that point, and right. you're doing the best you can to keep it consistent and keep it within that parameter, but you're blending a whiskey that has to go all over the world. Right. And you can't put as much creativity into it because you've got this hundred year reputation mm -hmm. for it and this hundred year style that you've got to keep up with as you can when you're creating something from scratch. Well, if you listen to John, when he first got started, he was working with Diageo. Right. Well, and he, he was working on Johnny Walker. Yeah. And he went to them and he said he, or he went to them and asked for permission to kind of create, I think it was in his terms, a boutique. Mm -hmm. Separated out. Uh, blending uh, mm -hmm. company or, or separate division and they turned him down. Sure. Yeah. And so henceforth, Compass Box was love born. It. Yeah. Love it. Because, I mean, the strength of flavor between the two is so clear. Um. And the fun part now is that Johnny Walker's doing stuff like these blenders batch editions. <laughs> yeah. doing exactly what John wanted to do 18, 15, 18, 20 years ago. Yep. Where they're creating these little boutique experimental whiskeys. Yep. Isn't that so, funny how that circled around? Yeah. Because there was a market for it and they're they're doing it to highlight their blending team now. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a market for it. Now we just, uh, ironically, oh, yeah. not ironically, but just so happens last weekend or two weekends ago, when did we do simple diversion? Was that, that last was weekend? Last Saturday. And we did Johnny Walker's and we had picked up that wine cask one. Yeah. Um, which was good. It's, it's I mean, it's, yeah. it's on the light end. It's 40%. It needed to open up a little bit. It I still love their rye. That it, rye finish. The thing. rye cask one was, right. was pretty good. Yeah. Next to it. But. Yeah. You want to know something, you want to watch, a fun one to watch out for, and this is one to look out for at your stores. You heard about this one? <laughs> Crown yeah. Royal Bourbon Mash? Uh-huh. Oh, God. You've heard of the controversy about this, right? Oh, well, Scott, yeah. Well, Scott tried it. And I picked it up early on. You got one, too. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Bourbon Mash. Let's see what uh, Crown Royal's bringing here. That was my first non-buy recommendation. I hate to say it, but it was, <laughs> okay. yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it's okay. There, there's a lot of crown royal to it, but bourbon mash is by far the wrong title to put on it, the wrong yeah. naming. Um, it's whatever they were trying didn't come through. Well, here's the story behind that. Bourbon mash is what they call their bourbon style whiskey that they make at Gimli, Manitoba, at the distillery. Hmm. And it's made from a bourbon style mash bill and they make it, but they age it in used barrels. They can't call it bourbon legally in the U S but they put it in used barrels and let it sit up there. And I was up at the distillery last summer and had some 17 year old bourbon mash that had been sitting in a used barrel for 17 years. And I'm going, Holy crap, this is good. Yeah. Now that would be different. That would and be good. I wanted to tell, and they wouldn't let me take a flask of it out. I was going to take a flask, go out and take it down to Kentucky and pour it for some boys down there. They they knew you just to watch that Martin, just to watch the face Gillespie while he's up here because he's going to try to sneak out a flask or two of this one. <laughs> no, they said that they, they, they wouldn't let us take any samples out because uh, it was all bonded storage. Mm -hmm. and they didn't want to get in trouble with Canadian tax authorities. But the whiskey they're making up there, this bourbon mash is is a bourbon style whiskey, but they mature it and then. It's the same, and it's one of the component whiskeys that they blend into the various Crown Royal expressions. Mm -hmm. So they've been making this for years, and bourbon mash is their internal name for it. Mm. That's why they called it a, tried to call it a bourbon mash. And of course, the uh, TTB let it slide through for some reason, then everybody in hell. Yeah. So from what I've been told is, if you can find it on the store shelves, buy it, because they're going to have to rebrand it. Hmm. And, yeah. and pull it off. Anything that's on store shelves can be sold now. But from what I understand, what I've been told, they're pulling anything that's back at the wholesalers off, and they're going to have to relabel it with a new name. Huh. Yeah, it's not that it was 
the, the bourbon mash, it, uh, when I tasted it, is very misleading. I mean, it's, yeah, that's it, what I, you said. I was expecting a lot more bourbon influence or maybe a Crown mm -hmm. Royal bourbon uh, whiskey. Um, like yeah. I said, it's definitely it set you up. You, yeah, it set, it, it set itself up wrong. Right. Um, it's definitely yeah, it's, their, it's their bourbon style whiskey they make with a majority corn, rye, the same thing, same as you'd make with a regular bourbon. Yeah. And had they had they labeled it Crown Royal Special Edition Number Two, yeah, you know, it would have been different. Yeah, yeah, with but, a generic type name. Yeah, but they call it Bourbon Mash in ta in house because that's what they uh, they blend this with some of their rye mashes with some of their coffee rye that they do in their coffee still. They make something like fifty different whiskeys up there that uh, they blend together to make the various Crown Royal and various amounts to make the various Crown Royal expressions. But if you see this on a shelf, it is worth buying because this is going to be sort of, I suspect this is going to wind up sort of being like the infamous Maker's Mark 42% editions from a couple of years ago. Yeah. It's going to be a bit of a collector's item at some point hmm. because it will be like the original Compass Box Spice Tree. It's the whiskey that got pulled off the market. Right. Because it broke a rule. So now you're peeling. I see you're peeling. You're cracking the label on that. I have right? two. So have, have you? You've had a sample of it or so. I've, I've tasted it before. Yes. It's but a, when it, I was up at Julio's last weekend for the and outside of Boston for the uh, Go Whiskey weekend, they were sampling it at the table up there, at the at the uh, Crown Royal table, and suggested that if you saw it on the if you happen to see it on the shelves at the elsewhere in the store, that that would be all there was available. Hmm. I immediately bought two bottles at 35 bucks a piece. Wow. Well, that's about $25 here. Did it. You got a good bargain. Taxes yeah. are higher up there. But it's, I mean, it's, it's a crown Royal. It's a very sweet rye. The, the bourbon notes of it or whatever to me are missing. Yeah. Well, well see, it's still only at 40%. Yeah. And I think it would have been different if they'd bottled it at a higher strength. Cause that 17 year old I tasted was straight out of the cask. Mm. Wow. So that's why it tasted so good. Mm. But I have not even done tasting notes on this one yet. But matter of fact, this is the first time I've even acknowledged that I have openly that I have this bottle because I didn't <laughs> say anything about it last week mm. or post it on social media. Um, I I can point out that the uh, the Crown Royal and Diageo folks have not are not commenting publicly on this yet because they're still trying to get the official announcement may come at some point later this month of what they're doing with this. Yeah. They've not discussed this openly yet, but uh, I think it's, it's worth hanging on to because it's an interesting whiskey, but I wish they'd bottled it at a higher strength because like I said, that coming right out of the casket, 55, 60% was, um, it was stunning. Yeah. Really? But now, like I say, keep in mind the the bourbon mash is misleading. If you, if you take bourbon mash out of your head, as you taste it, I suppose it's not bad, but when you've got that bourbon mash in there beforehand, it's yeah. misleading, and you start looking for bourbon notes, they're not there. Right, if because it's used me. wood. What's that? Right, because it's used wood. Mm, right. It's used wood, which is the only thing that would keep it from being called a bourbon in the States if they made it 200 miles south. Sure. Yeah, well, it wasn't a virgin oak cask. Right. It was refill. Wow. I'm still stunned with all the bottles that you were offering to me here. I've got backups. Whew. <laughs> Scott's very generous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't open them if he didn't have a backup. There would be a little hesitation. There were uh, slight. Well, there there was I actually have the uh, the hedonism quindecimus real and the hedonism maximus. Yeah. Uh, the Hedonism Maximus is from 2007 or 2008, really? and it's a much older grain Hedonism version that come out. Very limited. You love that. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't that one still, I didn't even bring it down. It's still sitting up there. Yeah, no, you didn't even make That's it. Probably it's not even within most reach. Coveted. Most yep. coveted. Rare. And, and it would be the Can hardest. I just point out that I love this job? Yeah. Oh, God, Yes. <laughs> No, okay, Mark. You talked about that. You, I think you said today's podcast is already done and and ready to go. No, over. actually, I'm still producing it. As a matter of fact, as soon as we finish up, I have to finish editing it and post it. 
Really? It's already recorded. I'm still. Wow. I, I stopped producing it so I could come talk to you guys. Oh, I love it. I can't wait to listen. That, and if we'd had more time, that was one of my questions for John. Was going to say, hey, so it's Sunday night. Monday morning is coming. You're heading into the office. What's on the to do list? Mm. So we know uh, Mark's is to, his to do list. Finish editing. Finish editing. But you yeah, don't want to go. Out. You don't want to go in and alter your notes on the hedonism now and and uh, <laughs> and beat the press release. No, because I could. But you know what? I've already got over an hour's worth of content in this week's show anyway. Mm. I want. Right. I wondered if. I mean, when. I, I had called John early uh, on the phone just to kind of see what the connection was and, and kind of talk to him and get some kind of see how much time he was going to give us, you know, uh, along those lines. And he had told me that the press release on the hedonism muse was coming out Thursday. And so I'd kind of wondered if maybe someone was going to tell him, Hey, you can't be putting out too much on that yet. I don't know if but they then, can tell him. Well, that's what I, I also thought. It's John Glazer. He <laughs> yeah. can probably do what he it's wants. It's his yeah, company. He, yeah. He could, he could break the rules. Yeah. 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 He would, you know, uh, you know, Tim would tell him, you know, I don't know if you can put it out. I'm putting it out, Tim. <laughs> putting it out. I'm sorry. I thought, Tim, you worked for me. Yeah. Tim, who signs your check? Sorry. I'm sure he wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He did. I didn't. I said, I, I told Bart scolded. It wasn't scolded. But when I first called oh. him on the phone, I said, Mr. Glazer, this he, is Scott. He from scolded the you. He goes, first of all, it's not Mr. Glazer. That's my father. That's my father. Yeah. It's John. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. That is good, though. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. that the queen? What? Was that your wife? No, that was my daughter bringing down a freshly baked brownie. Ooh. Oh, way to go, daughter. Um, they, You may have heard noise upstairs. That's the... Uh, grandson with the rest of the family and the three dogs that are up there and the dogs are tap dancing on the floor and <laughs> we love that we have well we haven't heard any of that they're, no. they're baking up they're cooking upstairs so i'm going to go upstairs and see if there are any survivors up there oh in the mess hey, mark do you know whiskey throttle is asking can you tell which addition um as far as spice tree or hedonism can you tell by the box or the labeling which edition you have or which batch, basically? Do Good question. I, I don't have know. not compared them to see if you can tell would tell between batches. I mean, you can tell between the different, like the hedonism, hedonism, um, the uh, the Maximus that they released a couple of years ago, and a couple and the various special editions. You can tell because they change up the labels, but as far as batches i've never looked hmm. i've never looked at enough different bottles over the years to see if they have a batch number on them i'm i'm sure they probably do but if there's a code on there i'm sure it's something that only somebody from compass box could figure out sure uh, and whiskey wolf is saying he didn't know there were two different hedonism blends out there you have there's the uh, the core range hedonism yeah. In the purple box, you had the, he done the, the first special edition of hedonism he he did was called hedonism maximus. Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago he did hedonism quindecimus, another yeah. special yeah. edition, and now what will be coming out that we talked about today with John was the hedon hedonism the muse. Mm. So you have the core range hedonism, and then he's done right. special editions of it. So, which, which he said, and that was going to be one of my questions is, you know, why have you chosen the hedonism to do those with, but he touched on that. It was the first whiskey, you know, and he keeps going back to it. Sure. To do those from. So sure. now the one thing I would right. point out, I though, tell the story of uh, going to uh, bars in London with this briefcase full of samples right. back 17, 18 years ago and trying to get bartenders to try this stuff. And this was when Scotch whiskey was not even on the radar. Sure. Among bartenders. Yeah, your grandfather trying, trying to get it to work. I mean, this was when bartenders were still pouring, doing margaritas and everything with tequila and all sorts of the fruity drinks and all that fun stuff. Sure. Yeah, and if we'd had more, that was one of my questions for him as well: is where's that that briefcase or that backpack or that satchel? satchel? Where's that satchel? At? 
The one that you use to yeah. take those samples around. Scott wants to see it featured on a bottle. I want it. I yeah. want that back. He wants to you know, buy that's a really sample. good question. <laughs> I got to keep that one in mind because next time I talk to him, I may ask him that one. Ask him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ask him and, and see if he still has it. That would yeah. be interesting. Is that a briefcase, a satchel? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he does somewhere. Mm. There you go. We've got a super chat, Kima. Who's super that? Tune. Tune, Tune Van Rouge. Tune from the Netherlands, I believe, right? Yep. Wow. Great live stream again. Keep going, guys. Thank you, Tune. Hey, uh, Mark, if you need to go, just yep. let us I know. Where he's got brownies. I'm good, guys. And... Okay. Oh, I'm good? good. You tell you. Well, I'll go as long as you guys want to. As long as you guys want to play. As long as there's interest. Hey, Sweet. we're, we're right. sitting around drinking and talking, so doesn't get better. Yeah. We know you got to. <laughs> we know you got to edit the show. I got a quig coming up. <laughs> oh, that sounds. Good. That's no, inside, it's fine. Inside baseball. I'm having fun. Well, we can do this for a while. Sweet. Oh. All this compass box in front of me. It's like an extravaganza. Well, that. and what? Okay, we did the core range early on. And then we didn't do general several quite a few uh, we went quite a while without doing any compass boxes sure. and what was happening i was picking up the special editions you were but i was picking up a bottle and i didn't want to open them and review them i wanted to save them for special right. occasions i noticed they were appearing on the shelf but recent with uh, phenomenology and no name when they came out we made the decision let's buy two bottles that mm -hmm. way we'll have one to keep and that's we right. can open and review one well, so that's what no, we've started doing. that way there's no coveting I still need, I do not have to. I shall not covet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what number it is, but it's in there. I don't have two bottles of the three-year-old deluxe, really just because of the price point on that one. But, and I don't have two bottles of the quin, the hedonism quindecimus. But that one I would, if, if John wanted to open that one or talk about that one, I would. Would you mind, you've got a little bit of the general left. Oh, it's on the shelf. Well, we, we did want to do that. Right. I'll need a fresh glass. Now, and Tom R is watching. I've promised Tom R a sample of the generals, one that he has not been able to find or get. So I do Ooh. have to save some. This is all that I have left of the general. Bart wants to go back and retouch on it. Right. So let's do we will do that. Scott opened that live on the show. We we teased that we were going to be reviewing something else. And then out of the like out of a satchel, you pulled out the general. And I was like, Are you serious? You're going to open that up? And you were like, Yeah. Scott, well, Scott has a touch of the collector in him, Mark. He, he sometimes will like to collect rather than open, although I'll give you a lot of credit. Go ahead. While you're pouring, I, I've been test. I've been actually doing a little research today, testing out this new glass. I got a cup. They sent me a couple of them over the last few days. It's called a, a two-oth glass from Ireland. Really? And I'll hold this up so you can see the uh, sort of got this triangular background. And I don't know if you guys can see it real closely yep. there. Yep, looks good. Yeah, we can see it. But uh, I'm trying it because it sort of has this. I like. I I I've, I've been using Glen Cairns for years, and I've always appreciated Glen Cairns. This sort of has this little flared lip on the top, Love and that. I've never really enjoyed flared lips on the uh, on whiskey glasses. But this one is actually this one is actually getting to me a little bit. It's. Uh, it's not letting as much of the aroma escape as I thought it might. So it's it's T U A T H glass, and I think it's uh, tuath.com or something like that. But if you see it yeah. out there, it's sort of a new new arrival. But I Daryl McNally at Dublin Liberties Distillery introduced me to this a couple of weeks ago in New York when I was tasting the Dead Rabbit Irish whiskey with him. He had one of these and. I took some notes on it and contacted them afterwards and they put a couple in the mail to me just to try them out. And I'm actually finding this pretty interesting. Good. Yeah. Those will be uh, neat to look at. We like looking at different glasses. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, st I'm still sold on Glen Cairn. That's my go-to glass. Sure. But every once in a while you want to try something different. And this is one of these ones that's really sort of photogenic with the, uh, the triangular base and the sort and the lip and everything. It looked, it's good for photography in a lot of ways, but it's also <laughs> yeah. good for nosing. Yeah, it has a nice profile to it, a little taller than the others, and then the lip at the top. So, you know, Bart, we were reviewing uh, some of the Riedel glasses. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the Riedel, Bart just yelled uh, from where he went. Bart had to leave for a couple minutes. I can hear him. 
where he yelled from cognac, the Riedel cognac glasses. He sent an email uh, from his phone to Riedel to tell him how much he really liked the glasses. And he went on in the email uh, via voice to text, but he said how the lip meets his, or the, the top, the rim of the glass meets his lip like a kiss. Like a great kiss. Like a great kiss, he said. Unfortunately, an auto-corrected to meets my lip like a great kid. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, they literally sent me an email like we and it said we have rejected your comment. <laughs> it, it it broke yeah. some rule, and I was like, oh my God. And I, I contacted their whoever ran whatever, and I said, No, 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 no. That was an autocorrect. So, yeah, they said, yeah, I we, hate autocorrect. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It meets your lip like a great kid. That's what happened. But, yeah, I agree with you on the the way that I'm sure that glass as well. We'll have to try that. But that Riedel cognac glass, the way it just it makes it so sippable. Okay, so I, I did. We're going back to the general. It's been quite a while since I've been to it. Long the nose time. on this is delicious. I am getting nice, rich wood and share, slight sherry one. notes off of it as well. Wow. Yeah. We had this early on, and I don't think I appreciated it at the time. We didn't. Well, you had just opened it as well. We didn't yeah. let it appreciate. I mean, you surprised me with it during a show, uh, and then you we opened it kind of – it was a pre-recorded show, but you opened it, and we tried it right away. We didn't really let it open. It was pretty new in our whiskey career. Now I will point out, uh, Whiskey Throttle is watching. Mm. Uh, Whiskey Throttle is a is a Compass Box uh, fan as well, but he has a bottle of sealed still of the last vatted malt. Ooh, mm. which I I would like to procure from Whiskey right under Throttle. Big Ben. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, the very last oh, yeah. blending. That's year. a rarity. Yeah. yeah. And that was well before. That was another. Box that break. was another John Glazer upraised finger to the Scotch whiskey industry. <laughs> you know the story behind that one, right? Yes. The last, yeah, the last vatted malt. Yes. But go ahead for those, because there's going to be some that have no idea what we're talking about. Well, the Scotch whiskey law of 2009 required that. Distillers and blenders switch from the term bl batted malt to blended malt. Right. They grandfathered in anything up to, I think, about some point in 2012. That at some point after, I think, like December 1st, and I'm, th I'm, I'm sort of whiffing on the dates here. December 1st, 2012, you can no longer use the term batted malt. So I'm using December 1st in, as an example. November 31st at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, hours before the deadline, Compass Box releases the last vatted malt. Right. Just because they could. To get away with uh, getting in just under the deadline to uh, just to sort of uh, raise that little, uh, give them a little, the little two finger salute. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know I went and looked even online. He shot a little video under Big Ben where, uh, like at 1159, he, he literally pours his last little blending right in front with Big Ben in the background. Yep. So, wow. Yeah. When we, before anybody hammers me on the dates, I may have those dates slightly off, but sure. that's sort of the general gist of it. I'm well, working off memory here, guys, and I've been drinking all afternoon. So, <laughs> first of all, we love the sound of that. <laughs> and, and I've got to say, that in the years since I, the last time I tried this was when we recorded the show and we were very much, I was very much a rookie at the time. And you're right. I'm picking up more subtleties now yeah. before it felt like it was Oak, 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 and Oak. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this, well, this has, th this was a blend. Of, there was two parcels. One was, he, he didn't release the ages at the time cause he couldn't, but wow. one was supposedly like a, 33 year old and one was a 42 40, year old yeah. or something like that. Yeah, right. But and, and it was the uh, rich, yeah, the richness of it now and, and slight sherry is in there with it. Richness, the wood, the oak, the time, the age. Right. You shouldn't have opened this. <laughs> <laughs> You're complaining now. I know that's just, he knows what I'm doing. I, I'm basically mm -hmm. 
Cause I kept telling him, don't be a collector. And then when he surprised me, I was like, yeah. Wow. Um, but at the time, if, if anybody goes back, goes back and watches the old show, um, you know, and, and maybe it's changed since when you opened it, but I'm telling you, I'm, I, I guarantee my palates improved over the years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing I enjoy about hanging out with you guys is the way you break each other's balls. On a regular basis. <laughs> that is <So>. the truth. <laughs> yeah, we've got 23 years of history, and uh, and we're wouldn't you say we're both pretty we're we're kind of similar but different at the same time? I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> like an old married one. couple. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somehow we we marry well together. We're a good blend. Since we're on blends, but yeah. Goes no, Mark, uh, thank you for joining. And really, even early on, I mean, you were um, um, receptive to coming on our show and, and joining oh, us. Yeah. Well, you and called us out when we were like, we can't believe you, you a famous Gillespie-ish came on the show. You were like, oh, shut geez. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You busted please, our balls. No. Yeah. I know. You were like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. No, please don't. I No. <laughs> This I is fun. You. This is I have fun doing this stuff. This right. is yes. I we, I love this job. I couldn't imagine doing anything else in the world. Now I can't imagine going back to real news. Oh yeah. There's not enough money in the world to get me to go back to covering real news today. Wow. Well, and of course, you know, uh, Bart and I have talked about that. I mean, we have full time jobs now. Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, we'll we'll talk more about those. But yeah, I right. I said, you know, a few years from now, we're going to retire. We'll right. be doing this. Will be our full time job. Boom. Or this will be. Uh, well, I don't know if it'll be full time, but full time. We'll be working from home, right. doing YouTube, doing whiskey, you know, traveling. Twitter, Instagram. Right. Hopefully traveling. Sure. Doing stuff, meeting people, hanging whiskey, out with Mark. Hopefully, whisk and doing In it person. from home. This is what people talk about doing when they talk about working from home. This right. is it. Right. Yeah. We agree. Yeah, you better just hope your wives go along with that idea. Oh boy. No, well, they, made they will. Yours will. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's Puerto Rican. I'll find out if she agrees or not. <laughs> so I tend to upset her no matter what I do. So I just roll with it. Uh, Mark, Jez's body is asking earlier on, he'd asked about. Um, you and if you gassed your whiskeys, oh, I know before we had I, talked about yes, this, he does not. If I what? If you gassed your whiskeys to preserve them? Oh you, hell no! You never <laughs> have. Now I will tell you though, right. there has been I've noticed one bottling that I've had that changed over quickly within a year. Was it and that Peter's? was no, it's Woodford Reserve Rye. Well, yeah, Pete's I think will, especially the lower Could. they get. Um, my Lafroy eight. Your you're 14. Well, no, well this magic that? cask is an example of that, guys. I've had this thing since 2006, and was, it hasn't changed. See, and that's and I'm serious. down to, to that level, and I've never put, I've never done the Coravin stuff, or never put the nitrogen or whatever in it, and I, I wouldn't do that with any of my bottles. And very rarely do I ever experience a bottle that's gone bad unless the cork leaks. Uh -huh. The thing that I've had in the past couple of months is I've had about five different corks break off on me when I've tried to open older bottles. Really? And that's what pisses me off. Yeah. I've had, <laughs> I've had that, I've had that well, with a couple older Brook Lotties. I suppose you could look at that, though. There's a good seal there. If they broke <laughs> off in there, that, that, that means there was a good seal. But yet a rotten cork. Yeah. Well, I'm just not sure whether it's the cork dried out inside or whether I was trying to pull it out to whether I should have... Uh, maybe done this with the bottle to sort of yes. soak the cork before I did it. Right. Or how, however, but I've had like half a dozen corks break off on me in bottles that I didn't think would, it would happen to. Right. Well, we've had it a couple Brooke of times. And it really, it's just been like bottles that are eight to 10 years yeah. old. Brooke not, Lottie's. Not even really that old. Brook Lottie's. I'm just if they got a batch of, bunch of bad corks back in the day. Because it was but, the Brook Lottie 3D3 I had They break were like on a me, late 2000, like 2007, yeah. 2008, 2009 yep. bottlings. Yep. We've, we've had corks. We bottles. found some of the old dusty cans, and, and uh, yep, I'm real careful with yep. those because they break. I've had a bunch of Lafroigs break on me in recent weeks. I've really? got a couple of different Lafroigs that have broken. And I can't find, I, I'm having to save cat corks now just in case something mm -hmm. breaks because 
I've tried shoving wine corks into there and the wine corks don't work from right. upstairs. Yep. Yep. That's what I did. I had backup, uh, Port Charlotte, uh, Scottish barley corks have gone in on both my 3d three and on the infinity bottle. So, uh, David Shea real quick. He comments that he tips his bottles to keep the corks from drying out. Mm. I would, the only thing I would say is they, People do recommend not storing your sure. bottle well, don't, like this. Don't. It'll no, eat no, up the cork. Never. Right. Don't store your bottles. It's like not, yeah. I think the debate is out there. If you occasionally come in and tip it just to wet that cork, I think that debate I would is say, out and there. I'm going to try this with my next old bottle that I open up, is just tipping it once just before I pull the cork out just to try to let it, let it soak a little bit and loosen it up a little bit and lubricate it. Mm. Maybe maybe even the day, maybe even the day before or something, do it and let it see if it kind of soaks <laughs> up in there or something. Yeah, but that would require anticipation. Though. See, right. I'm with you, Mark. I am with you. <laughs> Scott is like a mathematician. I would just be like, I want that, yeah. and then I would open it and go, "Damn, it broke." Yeah, yeah that's what they, I do late at night when I'm getting ready to have my last dram of the night, and I'm looking at the shelf, and you go, "You know what? I haven't had that one in a while. Go yes. for it." And yes. the cork breaks off and it's time to go get the cork screw and pull it out. And yes, yes. Either strain it out or push the rest of the cork in and then pull out whatever gets into the glass with your fingertip. I don't think uh, you even have to strain it out. I just, I argue, I, I don't think, I, don't. I think there's been, yeah, I think there, I think we've probably drank plenty of cork in our time. It's not going to do anything to you. <laughs> just, cork yeah. We used to eat paste in kindergarten for crying out loud. And right. That didn't affect us much, much. <laughs> yes. Glue. <laughs> oh uh, David God. Shea does point out he doesn't store he does not store them uh, lying down Thank he just you. tips them to wet it yeah Thank and, you. and that's what I say I think that debate is out there if that's good or not to keep that cork I'm wet. gonna throw well. wine you can do that because wine they tell you to do it because wine is only maybe at most 15 percent alcohol right by volume right if you do that with whiskey it'll dry out the cork and eat through the cork like in no time at all right we so have never to store it whiskey on its own Right. We have to link up with Mark live and share a dram at some point. Yes. In person, you mean? Right. Live. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, that'll happen. Right. We've got to figure yeah. that out. Kilted Kilted well, Moose is joining us. That's Scott Monroe from Scotland real quick, yeah. Mark. But but Scott points out, he says he drank too much last night. <laughs> he swore he would wait till next weekend before pouring a dram. No, pour now. But here we go again, he says. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, Mark, Once more into the bridge, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Very nicely said. No, as a matter of fact, what I was thinking, and if you guys will let me know when you're going to do this Drams for Fams thing, let me know. I might just try to see if I can burn some frequent flyer miles and come out and join you for it. Wow. Ooh. Wow. That, that would could be, be fun. Cool. Very Have nice. you on set. Hmm. It depends on the weekend. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get with you and we'll, we'll even try to work that out. Hmm. If we can do it, I'll burn some frequent flyer miles to come out and see you guys. Beautiful. Good. You're nice. Beautiful. Wow. Well, that should take we some vacation time? Yeah, well, we'll take it. Should we uh, begin to wrap up? Where are we at? You're looking. We, uh, I got to calculate here. We went live 1145, 1245. Sure. Have we driven everybody wow. away? We are about an hour good and crowd, 10 still. hour and 15 into this. I say one, I we, we slowly wrap it. I could, I could indulge on your compass box your, selection for hours. I bet your Puerto Rican wife is wondering where you're at. She's probably slightly interested in my, uh, <laughs> in my timing. She knows you're hanging out with Scott. You're not coming home for hours. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that's been the, that's been the issue. She knows better. Right. And we're rather uh, having you and John on again is is quite honestly, um, milestone. Yeah, yeah. Having John on is a milestone. Me is a speed bump. <laughs> Not at all, sir. You you know you are a leader in the uh, in the industry. I'm uh, just too look. damn stubborn to give up. <laughs> That's right. Don't ever quit. For those watching, though, um, if you haven't tried, if, if if you look at a whiskey and it says blended whiskey yes. on there, well, you are you're missing out. Compass yeah. Box, John Glazer is doing some wonderful, right. marvelous stuff. Today we just opened up. I've had sample of the uh, double single before. Bart mm. has not. He loved it. Mm. What's your thoughts on the double oh single? Oh my god, I'm gonna. I wish I could find it. Yeah, uh, we opened up the Circus. 
a delightful blend, nice sherry balance with uh, citruses, fruits. I poured uh, more double single. The double single is extremely impressive. You opened up the Lost Blend. We had not opened that before. Yeah. I knew it was peated. I'd had a sample of it as well and before. You're going to tell me Very where well I can done. find that. I will get it tomorrow. Um, we went back to it. Had been a couple of years since I'd even. I had this mm. was all. Well, I had. I had a little bit more of the general left. I cra I'd had it sealed. We cracked it. Uh, poured a little sample. It's delicious as well. Wow. Um. It was. We Columbus had, Box Extravaganza. John Glazer was on. He talked content. about a new hedonism release, the muse that's coming out. He right. revealed the ages. Which that's, Mark has had. And we just had a super chat from it's V. Rich. Right way up. Yep. Thank you. Matter of fact, if you guys want, I will give you my tasting notes. because do. I, uh, Let's do that yes. real quick from Let's Hedonism. Preview. The muse. For the Hedonism, the muse, 53.5% ABV. Uh, the nose, when I was tasting it, I got fresh fruits, honey, berries, a hint of oak, and soft spices. The taste was fruity and tart with citrus fruits, fresh berries, ginger root, hints of honey and vanilla in the background. The finish, long, tart, vibrant, and luscious. Mm. And in a word, wow. <laughs> now, for the score, you're going to have to listen to next week's Whiskey Cast. Oh, oh, yeah, there yeah, you Jesus. go. Nicely done. I'm going to guess, though, of just from your notes. 93. That's what I, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, How the hell did you think? Yes. That was a good guess, you said? Yes. <laughs> Bam. Damn it. We've listened to we the listen We listen to you religiously, <laughs> sir. Hey. Religiously. <laughs> nope. That's uh, yeah, 93 was about what I would put on it. It's it's a good one. But as I said before in the interview with John, and I mean this sincerely, and for the record, I've never taken a dime in advertising money from Compass Box. I have never had a bad Compass Box whiskey. I agree. Well, you can tell, you can see his passion. Yeah. You can feel his passion mm -hmm. and you can see it. And even, like I said, the, the, the amount of detail that's given to things that have nothing yeah. to do with the juice, but in part, the feel of what is inside is, I think is what, what was intriguing to me mm -hmm. and, and what he did with, I'm 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 not joking around. The peat monster Scott literally called and said, "Come over, yeah. I want you to try something I picked up." And it was the peat monster. And at the time, oddly enough, I wasn't the peat head I am now. And uh, all my weird prejudices came. I remember looking at it, saying, "Look how clear it is." I mean, and I knew better even then. We were probably only a year into the show, but I knew better. And he's and he, Scott literally said, "Shut up and just try it." And that should be our our motto: is shut up yeah. and try it. <laughs> well, we did. Um, v Rich, thank you for the super chat that came in. We appreciate that greatly. Um, two live streams today. There's a couple comments coming in, and and Kilted Moose is pointing out he's going to have to go back at, to the beginning and watch. Mm. There's two live streams today. Uh, the first one we hooked up, Mark was with us. Sure. Uh, we got on a little bit early, but uh, just to talk a little bit about before John Glazer joined us via telephone. Right. We had a phone call with John, lasted about 45 minutes. Great information came out on a new release, Hedonism the Muse, that's coming mm -hmm. up this week. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the owner. He can release information when he wants. Break the rules. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> but whether a press, press release is coming out or not. He writes it. It's there. It's in that first live stream. Sure. Uh, and and then Mark Gillette. So then we did, we, we disconnected. We shut that one down. We kept that one right about the hour mark. We came back live with Mark Gillespie to talk more about Compass Box. Uh, in that first stream, though, uh, John Glazer released ages on the hedonism, the muse. And there's a lot of late, I mean, you know, 27, 28 year old whiskeys early thirties mm -hmm. year old whiskeys. There's a small percentage sure. that was a 17 year old whiskey, I believe. Um, definitely one to look for. We've, of course there's the core range hedonism. There's he's special release is hedonism. Maximus. You opened your circus. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mark has but, included uh, a whole lot of information. Yep. From his tasting. Yeah. And then Mark just gave his tape. Mark had a sample. 
we beat, I'd like to mark the date and time. We beat Mark with some information <laughs> from John. However, Mark beat us. Come on. Mark Mark beat us with the yeah, actually the actual sure. sample. Sure, way ahead. He's got. I would take. I'd rather house. have the sample. You I would think. rather have the sample. <laughs> oh, guys, come on! <laughs> it's all fair. It's all fun. It is. Yeah, it's a great. It, this is a great. I don't even want to say job. It's not a job. A great whiskey hobby. world. Great whiskey world. Right. It's a mission. A and great it's, mission. Uh, yes. It's a We're plan. on a mission from God. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thanks to everybody that tuned in. I think uh, we are wrapping it up. I think everybody knows where to find you, Mark, but go ahead and, you know, put out your information again, just in case. we. Well, if somebody. you look at whiskey cast without the E and a T on the end, you'll find us on iTunes, Apple podcasts, most of your favorite podcast sites, along with pretty much every social media feed there is out there. And of course at whiskeycast.com. Beautiful. Yep. Excellent. You are the man. And uh, should guys. I should I end us? With the general. Oh, with the general. Scotch it, you scotch gods. Slancha. Slancha, guys. Dummies. Dummies. Thanks, Mark. All right. We are Thank signing you. off now. Hang on.